Yes. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Jaki Hussain, age 51, right? What's good? Uh, Ponchas. right. 50 years old gentleman, right? He actually basically hospitalized with the history of the road traffic accident. And we got a consultation uh, from the Department of Medicine. And we have seen, because of uh, the consultation, it took half good action, half good action. Right, he has got the, some of the hands and feet swelling. Did the power they can Right. It's power to that one. So hands and feet swelling and also the some of the facial puffiness. They stick to that one. Right. So that was the basically the consultation, uh, the main concern, right? So immediately after Econ Arm Very good. So Immediately after that, we have looked into him and we have seen uh, some of the important hands and feet swelling. So, whenever the patient comes up with us, the hands and feet swelling is really important. So, we thought about some of the fluid accumulations, alright, into our body. So, fluid accumulation that happens due to different organ systems dysfunction. So, if we talk about the, the fluid, we pass the fluid from our body, it's very simple. There's a kidney is passing around. Urine, right, in the form of fluid and is the balance of fluid. So, if the kidney is dysfunction, so the first organ come forward. The kidney dysfunction that leads to the fluid accumulation. Next to the kidney, the liver, just top of the kidney, I say sometimes, right? So, liver is dysfunction, in that case, the fluid accumulation. And top of the head in the department of the heart, so once again, the heart dysfunction, whatever the ways, organic and structural and functional abnormality, yes, it can cause the fluid accumulation. Means the heart causes congestive cardiac failure, we can say, the liver, liver failure. Right, in the form of chronic liver disease patient, in the case of decompensated chronic liver disease, and also the kidney, the renal failure, or maybe some of the nephrotic syndrome. So these three, right, the kidney, liver, and also the heart. So always we try to evaluate this to evaluate and also exclude the three important organ systems, whether they have the dysfunction or damage to, to their, their accident, causing these of the hands and feet. But mind you, what is suspected first at low, this is very important, he is looked to be a very powerful face and also hands and feet swelling. Not really the fitting gidima, that's really important. You come up, you come up. It took it happen, all right. Not that fitting, all right. So that suspicious as yes, the non fitting gidima, we say that yes, the hypothyroidism is the next stop that we should think about. And also, another important thing, he has a good uh, history from his family members. They say that he has changes of his appearances means that his facial appearances is changed to a great extent. He has the puffiness and also some of the changes. So we put the diagnosis, the first diagnosis, the hypothyroidism, and second one is also the acromegaly. So our target is to exclude the acromegaly and include the, yes, the hypothyroidism as well. And also, if the acromegaly is the pituitary causing some of the hypo-functioning of the pituitary gland, and also some of the visual field tests we have done on the best side, we have not nothing found. We have not actually found any of the findings of the pituitary gland uh, involvement and causing some of the facial symptoms of the visual field involvement. So we tried ourselves to exclude the acromegaly first to do the test like the OGTT with the growth hormone measurement, and uh, we cannot do the IGF one test because this is unavailable uh, in our hospitals as well. So what we found basically, right? We have found right the. Uh, we send the test like the TSA and FT3, FT4 all together and we have found the TSA is more than 60. I would like to show some of the reports in here so that will be fine. And I would like to present in different ways. Basically, I would like to show some of the biochemistry. So you could write some of the features here. So, Whenever we talk about the hypothyroidism, yes, you see the reports of NTTPO is positive. There is the last test that we have found, right, the more than 2,000 is significantly very, very high. And the thyroid gland ultrasound that we have done, the diffuse enlargement of the both thyroid gland, just keep in your minds what the reports are finding. I'll discuss it a little bit later. Yes, this is the HBSAV negative, means the liver evaluation has been done. And he has got some of the IFG and IGT. You see the fasting glucose is 6 and the 2 hours after blood sugar, that is the 7.8. And the basal growth hormone is 0 0.06. This is normal. And TSS comes up like the more than 60. So yes, this is very, very high. Uh, you can remember the 0 0.5 to 5 is the normal range. So after is reduced. So once again, the hypothyroidism, HB1C is typically normal. 
and increased CV is normal, and having the ultrasound liver has some of the mild fatty changes only. Protrumin time is normal. Here the CBC count is absolutely normal. And here the creatine is slightly raised, 1.41, but having the serum total protein and albumin is 3.6. So once again, the liver is accurate. Liver is not the main problem causing this. Yes, hands and fears. Yes, my dear doctor. So once again, what I'm saying, my dear, listen very carefully, one of the important talks that I like to say. What is that? That is the hypothyroidism, how do we say? Hypothyroid is not a diagnosis, it's not a disease. It's just a manifestation of the sound underlying disorders. So whenever we talk with the hypothyroidism, so we need to evaluate the underlying etiologies, what can cause this hypothyroidism. So once again, the hypothyroid is just a thyroid function status, means the thyroid gland over functioning, that we call the hypothyroid. Thyroid gland normal function, we call the U-thyroid. Right? right middle finger, take the right. Yes, thank you. So once again, uh, over functioning, that we call the hypothyroidism. Normal function is called the euthyroid and hypofunctioning gland that we call the hypothyroid. So this is basically a status of a thyroid gland. Alright, thyroid gland status. So what about the diseases? So this is a separate term. So once again, whenever we have got the hypothyroid, clinically, as well as the biochemical conformation of the hypothyroid, so in that cases we try to look into the underlying etiology. The first underlying etiology is the primary atrophic hypothyroidism. And second is the yes, the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I say sometimes if you've got the hypothyroidism, if you have the gland is yes enlarged, so the diagnosis yes at the bedside, the most typical is the Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the most likely. If the gland is atrophic, it means you cannot pump with the gland at the bedside. So yes, the diagnosis is the primary atrophic hypothyroidism. Except we say that the atrophic means the gland is atrophic, all right? So you cannot pulpit the gland. So in contrast, the gland is yes, the enlarged. So in that case, you can think about right now, hyper, hypothyroid with the gland enlargement, the, once again, the thyroid vagal, the diagnosis of the Hashimoto's thyroid is likely present. So once again, I'd like to go back to the clinical manifestations of hypothyroid and hyperthyroid. I would like to talk about the three bundle packs is really important. So just let me start by the three bundle packs. This is really important to see and look into the patient's history so that you can evaluate the patients having the features and manifestations of the hyper, hypo, as well as the huge thyroid. So yes, my dear doctor, what I'm saying, starts with the first question, whenever you evaluate the patients, there is a weight changes. So you need to ask about the weight changes. It has been the weight changes is weight loss. And next in the, yes, once again, immediately after the question of weight changes with the weight loss or weight gaining, there is the appetite. And after that, once again, you have to talk about that once again, that the diarrhea means the bowel movements, so the diarrhea and posture. I said the WAD bundle packs is really important to ask about the GIT manifesting of weight loss, appetite, diarrhea. In case of hyper and in case of hyper, once again, weight gaining, appetite is will be reduced as well as the diarrhea just turned to the constipation. So this is the bundle pack of the WAD. Next bundle pack is the HSP, so H for heat intolerance. As for sweating and pee for palpitation, in contrast to the cold intolerance and sweating, in contrast to the dry, all right, and sometimes the cold, all right, cool hands and dry hands. So once again, the palpitation is absent typically in case of hypothyroidism. So what I say, the WAD, HSP, and the last bundle pack, the third with the dry bundle pack. Dry means the restless, anxiety, and insomnia. In contrast, restless patient having the rest means the patient will have the extreme fatigue, ability, extreme fatigue and weakness. Anxiety, the patient will have the depression in hypothyroidism and insomnia, the hypersomnolence in case of hypothyroidism. So what I say, once again, the WD, HSP and dry bundle pack that you need to remember. And in case of female person, then you need to ask the last bundle, the mag bundle pack, the menstrual cycle. Yes, in case of hypothyroidism, we are getting the, once again, manorrhagia. In contrast, the hyperthyroidism, you can put the amenorrhea or dysmenorrhea. And sometimes we can get the manorrhagia also, the menstrual problem in both cases. So yes, once again, what I'm saying, summary talk, the clinical, all right. So I'd like to talk on the thyroid status examination is really important. So starting from the hands is the tremor, my dear. So tremor, testing we, we do with the piece of paper, all right, to test the tremor. And tremor, I said the tremor, tiny hands. Yes, the warm, sweaty hands, in contrast to the cool, clammy, and dry hands. And he has the extreme cold hands, all right. And with the dry and also the thickened skin, you see the skins are too much thickened, all right? You can feel it. So, yes, if the patient having the tremor, if the patient having the warm, sweet hands, so this is the hands finding 
of hyperthyroidism. In contrast, the patients are absent sever, and next point is the, the cold, clammy, and dry skins and the thickened skin in favor of hypothyroidism. So the tachycardia is the next point, so we need to look into the pulse rate. Yes, he has typically a bradycardia. So once again, what I'm saying, the tremor, tachycardia, and warm sweaty hand, these are the findings for hyper in contrast to the absence of tremor, bradycardia, and cold clammy skin, and also thicker skin, roughened skins. Yes, this is the findings in favor of hypo, hypothyroidism. So once, once again, next point is the blood pressure. I talk, so I say the pressure and proximal valve, I think this can be found in both in hypo and hyper. So this is not differentiated between the hypo and hypothyroidism status. Immediately after that, look into the eyes, and the, for the hyperthyroidism, we are getting the lead black. So we do a test for the lead black. Once again. So yes, he has no the thyroid eye features, but the thing is that the lead lag is a feature of hyperthyroidism. So I say the lead lag. Thyroid brewing and the reflux and the three important findings and the hands and the warm sweaty hands, tremor, tachycardia. These three and three, these are the six important findings to differentiate in between the hyper and hypothyroidism. So what I say, the lead lag and also the thyroid brewing with the bell of the stethoscope. You put the stethoscope. So definitely. He, he has absence of thyroid brewing. So once again, what I say, the lead lag, thyroid brewing, and the reflexes. So you need to see the reflexes with the hammer, right? And the ready reflexia, or once again, I can say the reflexes are reduced, or absent it is a finding of hypothyroidism. In contrast, the reflexes are exaggerated. These are the findings of hyperthyroidism. So what I'm saying, sometimes I'm saying that catch the hands and give a stroke onto the legs. So this is the diagnosis of hypothyroidism. There's two important bedside clinical findings so that you can say the thyroid status is hypofunctioning, means the hypothyroid. It does mean the bradycardia and bradyflex are the two important findings at the bedside. Sometimes you're getting it very typically. Uh, the hammer, the other way. The hammer. All right. So typically the findings, all right, we'll see and try to see the delayed relaxation of the ankle jacks is also very, very pathognomonic features at the bedside that you can say, right, the patient has that. Hypothyroidism. So what I'm saying, my dear, so at first that you need to look for the thyroid status, whether it's hyper, whether it's hypo. Immediately after that, the approaches, if you got the hypothyroid like him, so immediately after having the history and the clinical findings, immediately after you can do the test for the thyroid function test. If you have seen that, yes, the TSH, very important findings. The TSH is normal range of 0.5 to 5, you can remember 1 to 5. At least the more than five, if you think about the yes, the hypothyroidism. But the thing usually, yes, at least more than ten, usually we are getting at the clinically manifested hypothyroidism. Very good. Very good. Very very good. So, this is the findings we are trying to get. So, you see very close, very close pictures. And yes, very typically found, right? See, this is the delayed relaxation, typical delayed relaxation of ankle jacks. I am showing once again. Yes, once again, very close, more close. You see the delayed relaxation of ankle jacks. If I give a stroke, you see the delayed relaxation, very typical findings. Once again, the hypothyroidism. So the approach should be after having the history and after that, the critical findings of hypothyroid, you need to approach this, once again the thyroid gland examination. So I want to show you this one. So this is very important to palpate the thyroid gland. Yes. So we do very conventionally, all right, with the sip of the water and then feel that whether the glands goes up, all right, and palpate it. And he has some of the thyroid gland having the thyromegaly. And you confront basically with the 
ultrasound thyroid gland, you found some of the thyroid diffuse goiter. So once again, having the thyromegaly with hypothyroidism diagnosis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what I'm saying sometimes, that the, I'm saying the Hashimoto thyroiditis, sometimes that the Hashi, you're right, Hashi is a hypothyroidism, you can remember. And moto means motor, all right, here's the megaly. So you can remember having the hypothyroidism, having megaly, thyromegaly, and moto, if, if I say the TO, so TPO positivity, these three important criteria you can put together and make you diagnose the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Once again, I'm saying the Hashi means, if I'm saying the H-A-S-H-I, so once again, H for hypothyroidism presentation, and there is another H, yes, this disease can present up with the hyperthyroidism as well. So once again, the Hashi means, once again, hypothyroidism, sometimes you do with the hyperthyroidism, and with the motor, all right, for the megaly, M for megaly, and T for TPO positivity, this leads to us the diagnosis of the Hashimoto's thyroid at best side. And we can confirm by doing the radioactive iron optic scan. In that case, we can get right the diffuse, yes, the re reductions of the optic in a thyroid optic scan. So once again, the Hashimoto's thyroid is a, is a very typified with the TPO positivity, and we have found in his case more than 2,000 is significantly raised. And we got a very good significant history of his family members as well. That is also very typical. You have the five brothers, right? Alright, so these family members having the five brothers and five sisters all together. And in the family members, they have got the thyroid disorders. And these are autoimmune thyroid disorders, something like that. They can associate it. Sometimes they run in the family member. They don't have the typical uh, right the inheritances, but they are very closely associated with the family members. Sometimes they have. So he has got also, you, you can show him, right, a little bit. You can look into the eye, the bit of, uh, right, the uh, landscape, all right, <laughs> landscape. Uh, so yes, uh, he has bit of the thyroid eye disease and having the thyroid goiter. I've seen his paper as well. So he's also, I, I just like to show him just for a case of right, the Graves disease. I, I don't like to go for the details of him, but I just show some of the family members, Tinjon, Nachardon, right? So, so four, out of, uh, four out of 10 family members are suffering from the autoimmune thyroid disorders. My dear, listen very to the last tips and tricks for you guys. So what is that? Whenever you have the autoimmune thyroid disorders, so you need to look for the other autoimmune disorders. So we have found him as well. Yes, a bit of IgD, a bit of IFG and diabetes mellitus, but this is very basically the type 2 diabetes uh, possibility. But once again, there is a possibility the type 1 diabetes, the autoimmune disorder, and next to additional disease, sometimes autoimmune adrenalitis is also another association. So, in the lifetime, we have to look for the patients who develop the other autoimmune disease in the lifetime or not. And that is the management planning. So, we started the treatment like the thyroxine replacement, and we'll see and tighten the dose and also looking with the TH is coming down or not and I hope that right the uh, Hashimoto's side writing and these good discussions and the first assessment so if I if I'm saying the summary talk all together so if you, if you see see the thyroid uh, cases so you start with the history and history the three bundle facts I'm saying once again the WB W80 what we can say HSP dry and Mac and second talk is the warm sweet hands demotrichicardia pressure proximal myopathy and also the bleed black and thyroid buoy as well as the reflexes. So these three, three findings, and after that, if you have the hypothyroid, the approach should be the, once again, the thyromegaly. Thyromegaly, once again, hypothyroidism diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If the atrophy, the primary atrophic hypothyroidism, if the gland is really not palpable. So somebody talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, once again, H for Hashi, yes, once again, hypothyroidism, plus minus hypothyroidism, Mo for yes, motto yes, once again, he has the Megali and TO4, once again, TPO positivity. So he has got all these features all together. So this gentleman has got the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So thank you, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy. Thank you.